Hi, I'm Brian with HVAC School. And I'm Sal with Products by Pros. And today we're going to be doing a demonstration of Alcop, which we've done before, but today we're going to do something a little bit differently. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to show how you can actually bend the Alcop around the fitting. This is a way that a lot of manufacturers do it, and they actually make rings out of, uh, out of this. And we're going to show how you can do that in the field when you have a tight application, and maybe it's hard to get into um, where you want to do your work. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show how to do the rings, but I also want to show, because a lot of people have asked, when we get done making these connections, do they hold under pressure? So we're going to actually first seal off the end of this aluminum tubing using alloy sol. So I'm going to show you that process, and then we're going to make the joint, and then we're going to pressure test it. I've already got a, already got a Schrader stub um, on the end of the copper. Now, one thing that a lot of people ask is do you need to flow nitrogen when you're working with copper um, in this way? Yes, you should flow nitrogen. Um, copper is what builds up cupric oxide or copper oxide. Aluminum does not, but either way, it's a good idea to flow nitrogen um, while Absolutely. you're working for other reasons, um, not only just the oxide. So we're gonna start with sealing this up and then we're gonna move on to making the joint. All right, so this is the solder weld aluminum coil repair kit. I wanted to show this to you quickly because it also comes with the Alcop brazen in it and a smaller tube as well as the alloy saw. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's got the flux down on the inside and a baggie for the alloy saw. It comes with a rag on the inside. It has the flux for the alloy saw, the alloy saw rods, the alcop braze, and it comes with a brush, both for cleaning before and after, because again, with the alloy saw, you need to clean the flux off afterwards. So a nice little kit that's a little more compact that you can attach right to your torch kit or you can go with the solder weld HVAC all-in-one tube that also comes with the 56% and 15 or 5% silver solder. So depending on which way you want to go, either way you're going to have the Alcop so that way when you run into cases where you have to fit aluminum to copper, you are good to go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, the, the part that I'm going to swedge. I want to clean it up real good before I even cut it. And I, I, I really do like these um, kind of scotch brake pads. They're not quite as aggressive and they don't create as much um, little particles. And you do want the aluminum to be nice and clean before you work it. Right, so next we want to deburr the inside of the aluminum. It's always good to kind of hold it at a downward angle so that the burr doesn't go inside the tubing. Like a typical technician, I couldn't find my good deburring tool this morning, so I'm using the one on the back of my large cutters. Then I'm going to heat up the end while I swedge it. And I'm going to use this little Navac swedger here, um, and the reason being is that I can do it very carefully and slowly, so that way I get a really tight fit, because a really important part of this is that when I fit the copper inside, it's a really snug, very tight um, clearance in between the copper and the aluminum for this product. So in order to, in order to work with the aluminum, it's best to heat it up first. Just helps to soften the aluminum a little bit so that while you when you're working it it doesn't doesn't crack because the aluminum tubing is more prone to crack than the copper another little trick you can do is you can actually swedge out the just the outside opening a little bit more and that helps the solder pull in there makes it easier for it to pull in so let's see how we see how we fit so we have a nice snug fit and the outside is swedged out just a little bit more to help the alloy pull in. All right, so what we can do, and I've shown this in, in previous videos, is you can apply the solder here and kind of let it wrap around. All right, so when you make this joint, you let it cool naturally. Um, because they're dissimilar metals, if you cool it off rapidly, um, you're likely to cause little micro fractures inside the joint itself. Um, so we're going to let it cool, and then we're going to pressure test it and make sure that it holds. So we're going to pressurize this up, make sure that it holds. 
check the end of this in here. The end cup. All right, not seeing, not seeing any leaks so far. All right, now we're at 300 PSI. No bubbles. All good. All right, just for, just for fun, we're gonna take it up to 500 PSI. Yep, just fine, no bubbles. All right, so that held nicely. Now we're gonna try it in the upwards position, making a solder ring. All right, so it's important to put the flux in when you do this, and you wanna wrap it around pretty tight. And again, you don't have to do it on the actual joint. You can do it uh, with the same diameter copper elsewhere, which is gonna make it, uh, gonna make it a lot easier if you have a tight spot. All right, so the, the trick here is that when you're using the rings, you have to apply a little bit more heat into the joint uh, because otherwise what tends to happen is it, it melts the solder first and the solder falls off. So whereas I prefer to apply the heat to just the copper and then actually work my rod, when you're doing the rings, you've gotta be a little bit more um, complete in your heat. And obviously, anytime you're gonna apply heat to the aluminum, you've gotta be really careful about that. All right, so we just gotta let it cool off by itself and then we're gonna pressure test it. All right, so we are currently under uh, 200 PSI. So we're going to test this. All right, no leaks, nice and tight. We'll go up to 500. All right, no leaks at 500 PSI. So while the ring method can work when it's tight, um, you have to make sure to get a nice tight ring, and it's best used in this orientation with the aluminum swedged. You can do it the other way, but it's, it's advantageous to swedge the aluminum and fit the copper inside of the aluminum because the copper has higher uh, heat conductance, so it's going to tend to draw the solder more into the joint. So the product works great. You've got to make sure to keep your metals clean, and you need to make sure that you get them a nice tight fit. Those are the two biggest factors. And then um, if, you, if you try it the first time and it doesn't work, just try it again. You'll get the, you'll get the hang of it. Um, you just need to work with it and the, with the flux side down towards the pipe. So if you see the, the flux is the white powder inside of the channel, you just have to make sure that that is working down towards the tubing that you're working with. So I'm Brian with HVAC School. And I'm Sal with Product Supply Pros. Thanks for watching.